yokes uh, of anger and bitterness, O oh God. Heal the hurts, Father. Help us, O oh God, even, Father, as we come into your presence. But we seek, O oh God, hearts that burn for you, hearts that burn for more. Father, we are thirsty. We are thirsty, O oh God. We are thirsty, O oh God. We are hungry, O oh God. Oh, we need more. Father, there are so many people, voices, the crowd is out, but God, it's only you that we want. It's only you that we desire. There is nothing else, oh God. Father, do not leave us. Oh, we beg you, presence of God, stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Oh, we long, we long, we long, we long for more. We long for more. We long for more, we long for more, we long for more, we long for more, we long for more. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, I want to say to you right now, I'm just going to start the message that God has put in my heart, but I need to say, I'm imploring you. There are many who are becoming lukewarm. And you know what lukewarm is? Lukewarm is not that they've forgotten about God. It's that they don't really care about the call of the Great Commission any longer. They don't desire to come and serve the people or to bring people to church. They don't desire it anymore. It's become so routine. That's what lukewarm is, saints. Lukewarm, when God says... I wish you were hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, I spit you out. When we study that and we see the context and we understand that hot water can be healing and refreshing and cold water can have qualities that can help us as the original audience understood that passage. And then we come to lukewarm water that's no good. It doesn't do anything. That's what lukewarm is. We don't do anything for the kingdom anymore. We don't do anything for the kingdom anymore. We don't long to bring people to church. We don't long to bring people into his presence. We don't long anymore. We just think about what we need. We come, we take a little bit, we go. And sometimes we don't even come. We come for a little bit and then we leave. Even the Zoomers. The Zoomers are only one hour, some of them. Not all. They only one hour. It's as if the government passed the law that when you're on Zoom, you could only stay for one hour. That's lukewarm. And I'm here to tell you, this is the wrong time to be lukewarm. This is not the time. Because things are going to get harder. And there are many souls that need to come into his presence. But unless you are in his presence, you're not going to stand. And guess what? There's a corporate presence that when it comes upon us, we know, like Moses, we will say, God, don't send me anywhere unless you send me with your presence. So I want to say to all of you right now, even as you may sit, you may sit in his presence. I want to say those on, those on Facebook and those on YouTube, and I just want to ask... Those who are supporting in worship, you take a little break. Don't get too comfortable, because we're going to go into some worship again a little later. This is the second service for the afternoon. The first one, we just decided to worship for the whole hour. And at the end of the day, that's the beauty of tarrying with Jesus. We make up for what we lose on a Sunday, because on a Sunday, it's so rigid according to the time. We can't get enough of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to, I want to say to you, and I welcome those who are on Facebook and on YouTube right now, those on Zoom, I want to say to you that the enemy is seeking to, in stealing and killing and destroying, he is leading us through many ways into lukewarmness. And I'm not going to go on with the ites today. 
I believe that you've got some teaching. I didn't complete it. I can complete it, but I wait for feedback from you. If it's good and you want more, I'll teach the rest. But there are many ways, aside from not recognizing the ites in the midst of the church, where we mix a lot of things, a lot of beliefs, a lot of ways. We also, through dreams, the enemy comes to affect us. There are many different ways. I can't talk of all the ways right now, but I want to go back to a topic that we have done. We have done, but we need to do it again because this is why lukewarm won't work. Because when you are on fire for God, when you all you want is more of Him, more time with Him, more time in, in, in His presence, more time. You want more people to come to know Him. Satan doesn't like it. If he can't get you to be immoral, he will attack you in another way. One of those ways is that he will come through your dreams. And there's some of you have been asking me about dreams and I'm not here to interpret your dreams because I believe that when you use the word of God, God will begin to show you and there are some things that we know that represent certain things, but I'm not here to tell you. I'm here to tell you how he can come in and affect you in a negative way if you are unaware of his, the scheme of coming through the dreams. So this will, will apply to both adults and, and youngsters because if you are not dreaming, your spiritual monitor has been tampered with and you need to pray and you need to come and let's get some foundational prayer points. Not that you're going to say things like a robot, but when your foundation has been infiltrated with things that are not of God, that foundation is where the enemy will come through to block you from dreaming. And sometimes you get all kinds of really bad dreams and that's where we need to note how do we deal with these dreams? Because we can spend time in his presence here, go home and dream where in a way the enemy comes in the dream and comes back in and brings back defilement. I'm going to explain a little bit more again. All who have done it before, there are those of you that may not have heard about warring against the satanic dreams that will come. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And I want you to understand that without deliverance, holiness is going to be difficult. It is very challenging to walk in holiness if there's bondage that will not break. This is why we tarry with Jesus. This is, we don't stand here and just worship. We ask you to use the time to worship, to come to the altar, to cry out. There are many people, they message for appointments, but they will not come and cry out during tarry time and say, God, Help me. We have grown so accustomed to the world and counseling. When Jesus is the great counselor, but that must be combined with time in his presence, studying his word, bondage must break or else it is going to be challenging to walk in holiness. So if you find yourself Going wrong and wrong in a circle. There is bondage to be broken. And the enemy messes with your emotions. The enemy messes and comes through the dream. And until a man is delivered, he cannot be able to live. He will not live a holy life to please God Almighty. We will not possess our possessions until 
we are delivered of the bondage that keeps us back from walking a holy life. I want us not to get too accustomed to hearing these words. Since we've got to process it and move on to deeper depths and higher heights. We can never be tired of hearing it. Some of us have gotten tired and accustomed and we are not at the stage where we are saying, okay, God, what is the bondage that I am still walking in? You need to take stock. What is it I am still walking in? Because if you can identify that, you can identify the root cause. And is it that through the dream, is it that some of this is reinforced? I must walk in holiness. So one of the key ways that Satan uses is he manipulates us in the dream world. So I'm going to read a parable that you've heard, but maybe there's someone that hasn't heard it before in this way. Matthew 13, 22, 24 to 28. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears, T-A-R-E-S, among the wheat and went his way. So there was counterfeit sword while men slept. Listen to the parable. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then has it tears? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Matthew 13, 24 to 28. I want you to understand, when you are asleep, your God is down. So I'll give you an example. If you're in a home and a bandit could come knocking, when you are awake, you are alert. When you fall asleep, you are not as alert as you would normally be. Now remember we are body, soul, and spirit. Soul is mind, will, and emotions. When you are asleep, if I ever teach you about a slumbering spirit, which I hope one day to do, your spirit man ought not to be slumbering when you are asleep. Your spirit man is supposed to be awake, Remember the word of God says, God never slumbers nor sleeps. No, we are not God. But our spirit man will follow after the things of the spirit. So our spirit man is not to slumber nor sleep. So our spirit man will be awake. But we would naturally, our God will be down. Many of us do not have fully awake spirit men. Our spirit man, some of us. Our spirit man is either anorexic. We need to be more in the word. We need to be in more prayer. We need to come more into the presence of God to be strengthened. That's why Moses said, God, I will go where you send me, but do not move, take your presence away because it is in his presence there's life. And that life is what gives our spirit life. So our spirit man is supposed to get stronger and stronger. When we say, Christ, you increase and I decrease, my spirit man ought to be getting stronger and stronger. But that is not the case with some Christians, with many Christians. So when we are asleep and we have anorexic spirit man, the enemy can come in and, and, and manipulate and come into the dream and plant seeds and we get to know these things as we become more aware of the spirit realm not in a spooky way but we don't take things for granted so it's important to understand 
your dreams and it's important to cancel negative dreams because he god calls us to be watchful it's not okay just to say in our head well i cancel it and we will find out today there are three kinds of dreams there's the fleshly dream where it came from self there's the revelational dream where the holy spirit gives us revelation and there's also dreams that come from satan so it can come from self it can come from the holy spirit it can come from satan but even if satan comes in like a flood the word says we lift up a standard against him and that goes for what he brings in the dream but many of us don't know this because we see ourselves simply as flesh but we are spirit beings in a human body so therefore that dimension that takes place around us while we are awake when we are asleep we must always deal with so you don't just deal with it when you're awake you deal with it when you're asleep you deal with satan when you're awake you deal with satan when you're asleep so you will find that satan moves around planting evil seeds in the lives of men and women through dreams and destinies can be changed this way because if you believe a lie you begin to live a lie so depending on what comes in the dream if you don't understand that God has given you all power over all the power of the enemy and the authority that you walk in you will accept any dream that comes and almost like you are frightened of the dream and you will believe that because it has come in a dream that God has spoken to you God will use the devil and will allow the devil when I say allow in his permissive will God has not stopped the devil remember Job he allowed the devil to sift him so God will allow the devil to come and bring dreams but you must know when Satan brings some dream that you're going to die you wake up fearful how could that be the Holy Spirit do you understand what I'm saying you know that's a dream from Satan that's a demonic dream you don't just okay I cancel it you are supposed to verbally so that because Satan can't read your mind so speak the words I reject that dream of death and he's always sending in the form of people people that you know so that you will let your guard down in the dream those are familiar spirits spirits that look like people that you know those are not those people so many religious people believe when they dream someone who has passed recently and they come in the dream oh well so 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 visited me no that's a demon that's a demon with an agenda of death for you to embrace they forever come in to hug you so you understand that you've just opened the door by not rejecting the dream of a spirit of death now there's no need for you to get nervous you just have to learn you must know how to reject what is not yours but as you spend time in the presence of God, as you spend time in his word, as you pray, in the dream when it's happening, your spirit man will respond and come against the devil. We see this all the time for those who really, really want to grow. That's why discipling is so important. It's not about the problems you have. That's part of it. It's about how do I grow deeper? In my walk with the Lord how do I when I'm asleep how does my spirit man still fight I remember a young woman telling me she doesn't live in this country that she was sleeping 
And the husband was awake and there was a television show that was on that they thought was okay for the children. She fell asleep. But in her sleep, she woke herself up. She was right there in the living room with them. Saying the words, there's something demonic on this TV, take it off now. She's asleep. But she woke up. Her spirit man began to respond. And as she woke up, she realized what was on. So subtle it slipped in that husband didn't have time. And they clicked it off. Sometimes your spirit man will sing in your sleep and wake you up. I remember as a young one, as a teenager, because I was raised in a very difficult home. And I remember that song, there's a sweet, sweet spirit. You all know which song I'm talking about. In this place. You remember that one? Let me do start now. Eh? You know I love to worship. I was asleep. My mother was next to me and she was asleep. And in my sleep, I'm hearing a song being sung. I'm hearing a voice singing it. Till I realize. I woke myself up. My spirit, I did not know the song. But the words, the, the, your spirit man knows the words. And I woke up. And I'm positive that as you submit to being discipled, there are things that will happen. Your spirit man will respond even when your flesh does not. That's the purpose of being discipled. That's the purpose of being in a church community. That's the purpose of reaching out to others and asking God to refill you because your spirit man must get stronger. And what happens is, in the dream, when Satan is attacking you, your spirit man fights back while you are sleeping. This is what will begin to happen. And this is where we have to go because too many of us get deliverance and then whatever we were delivered from comes back through the dream. And some who are hearing this will say, no, it's not true. That's okay. You can belong to the not true club. But I will say to you that if we don't understand this, we will be frustrated because we get deliverance and then it's the same thing again. And, and also too, if you are a person that is struggling with fear, Satan will send some dreams through some people to frighten you. And the worst thing you could do is when a dream takes place and it leaves you uncomfortable, run and tell everybody because you are now speaking out the dream. You can go to those who can help you, probably one or two people more mature than you but what satan wants you to do is speak that dream out send it forth because by your words you have power and then or we might have a dream of somebody and it's not a good dream you run to tell them and you have not prayed cancelled it you go and tell them they start to get nervous so Satan uses dreams in all kinds of ways. The word of God says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. We can even be afflicted with disease through dreams. You dream that there are certain a certain disease or even I wouldn't go into detail now they're feeding you in the dream a lot of eating in the dream is to, it's to affect our organs and our body but many people who have learnt and understood the scheme of Satan 
in the dream they refuse the food they come and they say because again their spirit man is getting stronger that's why i say to people the key is, the key thing is come to service come to tarrying come to bible study come and learn the word take part in prayer sometimes we remain at a level where we never reach our potential so we are just operating on what we see and our discernment doesn't grow satan operates an organized kingdom so organized that he is so organized he is able to afflict people wherever they are if we do not understand the word says do not be unaware of the schemes of satan he operates in darkness secrecy he does not operate in the open he does not want people to know or be aware of his activities as always under darkness all these secret societies the masonic lodges all of them secret darkness that's what satan likes but ignorance is not an excuse because ignorance will cause us to perish so these things are not taught but they are in the word so people are coming to service doing everything but they're either not dreaming so whatever is taking place in the spiritual realm you are you are unaware like silence at night you wake up and there's just been total silence your spiritual monitor has been tampered with but then you have the other thing that's going on where there are dreams you gotta start a note what the dreams are so you will understand where the attacks are coming you identify is this a revelation from god is this a dream from satan is this my own flesh that's where you will start i want you to understand as well that a lot of people are ignorant of his operations but ignorance is not an excuse and he loves when you're ignorant so that he can carry out his activities it's time for us to wake up saints and the sad thing is because in this church we've taught this some have now locked it off but they're not growing some are growing but some are being taken down through their dreams there will be other things as well but we're dealing with dreams today you see witches and wizards you don't have to be afraid of them if you know how to deal with what they try to do how satan uses them you deal with them in prayer but you also when you sleep you're like those watchmen on the wall your spirit man is awake with a sword in his hand and that may not happen overnight but as you grow as you are discipled as you become the way you were when he first found you the love of your life you couldn't get enough of him now we've become so complacent some of us but satan is not complacent y'all he has he has stepped it up he has stepped it up i see the effects in the way the christians are responding to what's around them i see it in their lack of their lack of joy when one soul comes to christ or their lack of enthusiasm church is open let's bring people they allow a virus an agent of satan are calling it to keep them away from god's presence i'll put it as bluntly as i can who upset who upset 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 since i say this all the time because the the covid virus the agent of satan the covid virus don't keep us away from the supermarket come on who is go to that big supermarket where they just have lines and spend less than an hour or more than an hour it don't stop us but we can't come out it's dangerous we've fallen for the lie hook 
line and sinker right into the trap of Satan. And what's happening is that many believe they're growing, but the truth is, you know how you know if you're growing? When you are wrong, the community. You will know iron will sharpen iron. Iron can't sharpen by itself. You stay home, you sharpen in your own iron. You can't tell. You can't tell. And if a frog is dying in boiling water, slowly turning up the temperature from cold to hot, it never knows when it dies. No power can withstand the power in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And so, I want you to know that there is a spiritual world just as there is a physical world. The physical world is the world of man, the world of flesh and blood. The spiritual world is the world of spirits. We are spirit being in our human body, y'all. God is a spirit. When we leave this earth, we leave this body. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's only when God reunites us with our resurrected body. Do you understand? In the new heaven and the new earth. But I'm talking here even before when the rapture takes place. But I'm letting you know you are a spirit being in a human body. So there will be humans around you, but there will be spirits as well. Our Father is a spirit. And so we can't see the spiritual world with physical eyes. Though God can open your eyes and you can see into the spiritual realm, but that's not the norm. And those who are seeing in the spiritual realm all the time, allow yourself to be taken through some time of deliverance to make sure that's not a spirit of divination. Because spirit of divination allows you to see all the time. You, you're not supposed to see demons as you walk into a supermarket, sitting on all the shelves, and that's not God's will. When people walk in a church and say, they see everybody and they know what everybody's going through. That's a spirit of divination. God is not, that's not God's will for us. But a spirit of divination will open that third eye. And you will see what you're not supposed to see. I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about the fact that we need to understand the physical world is different to the spiritual world and the spiritual realm. And so, if you think about it, our destinies are controlled through the spiritual realm of a father's a spirit. And so, whatever our spirit accepts in the spirit realm will manifest in the natural, will manifest in the physical. So if your spirit man in a dream accepts sickness in the realm of the spirit, you will be sick physically. And there are many that talk about in the dream certain things come and they don't know about rejecting it and praying and canceling it and warring against it and then the very thing they've dreamt about manifests in the natural if your spirit accepts whatever your spirit man accepts in the spiritual realm it will manifest so I want you to understand that Satan wants to steal, kill and destroy and he's a thief. And he comes in the cover of darkness to steal or to plant evil seeds, as the word says, and go away unnoticed. And when we talk about tears, T-A-R-E-S, that he comes to plant, it could be sickness, it could be disappointments, it could be failure, it could be premature death, it could be setbacks. So these are things that take place in the spiritual realm first. 
before manifesting in the realm of the natural. And that's the reason why you need to get stronger so that you can take authority over any dream from Satan and cancel it and reject it and send everything back to the pit and say, you're not coming to bring this into my life. I'm not accepting it. Somebody comes to you and tells you about a dream and it clearly is not from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave you in fear. The Holy Spirit is not going to bring something that's, something that's destroy you. It will be to expose that that's what Satan wants to do. So what you do is you stop the person. You say, right now, I'm not accepting it. I understand you dreamt it. But why I'm saying I'm not accepting it, I am saying Satan gave you that dream and I am rejecting it right now. You go receiving as if the person is saying this is going to happen. You don't know how to tell them I reject it. You're a fair man. And fair man is what will allow you to accept. What you allow, you allow. You have to know how to reject. You're not rejecting the person. You're rejecting that dream. As from Satan. And you will not accept it. In Jesus mighty name. So I want you to know. That a man's destiny. Can be tampered with in the realm of the spirit. And it has happened. But those who understand what goes on, they, they refuse to walk in false identity. They refuse to accept Satan's plan for them. The only way he can come and bring these things is through the back doors. If you are walking holy. Now if you are not, other doors will allow him to come in. And there will be a networking to take you down. So we need to know that in the parable of the weed, in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus Christ pointed out a spiritual transaction took place. Evil plantation is possible. Have you understood? I read it to you. I said the enemy, um, the enemy planted tears. So that's an evil plantation. While men slept. So there are those who are physically asleep and there are those who are spiritually asleep. And I don't have time to talk about slumbering spirits today. But there are those whose spirits do slumber. And they need to be set free. No matter how much time they come in God's presence. They still... Prayer is dry. Reading the word is dry. They're not taking in anything. If you look sharp, they fall asleep in the first half hour of the service. Your spirit is slumbering. Change is not coming, no matter how. Then what we do, we are discipled to deal with that slumbering spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit using God's word. So I want you to know that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10.10. 10. And unfortunately, there are men and women whose blessings have been locked up in satanic storehouses. Due to lack of knowledge, we perish and we stay in bondage. If there's anyone here, the bondage is not breaking. You have to first want that bondage to go. You have to first want to choose what the word says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free so you ought not to be walking in non-stop bondage that's not breaking sometimes we get accustomed to it sometimes we get accustomed to the norm that's not supposed to become the norm and because we are we have not been around the early disciples that were on fire and the early church religion has come into the church so we are totally unaware of what it means to be around on fire Christians we will not settle for less God is raising up his remnant churches that will not settle for lukewarmness they may not be big in numbers but when it comes to say God I take your word literally I'm not settling for anything less God will reward their perseverance. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek him, you say, God, I am not 
accepting this warmish kind of walk. This is what you did in the early church. I want you to do it in my life. But you need to understand that Satan doesn't want you to proceed. And in the dreams is where the enemy may seek to overcome you. And so I'm going to stop right now because I would like for in this session that we at least have some more worship before we go on to the third service. But I want to just say to you, because I will continue this message and pray with you, those of you who can stay because the numbers are not above our minimum, that's we are, the, the max that we are allowed. I just want you to know that as we move on, just remember, it is the night time that Satan thrives. All secret cults carry out their meetings at night. Witches and wizards, they meet at night or 3 a.m. in the morning. And this is when demons seek to communicate with the living through dreams. And spirits move freely at night. They move in the day, but I'm letting you know they move freely at night as well. But the night is full of all kinds of, of things. And at the end of the day, offenses that are bottled up in the day, your mind starts to go wrong and wrong with those offenses at night. And for those who will not repent, that's when they carry out their offenses. So that's when you find the agents of Satan midnight, 3 a.m., they're carrying out vengeance against whoever. But I want you to know that the light of the world has overcome the darkness. So even if Satan is comfortable at night, you have to make him uncomfortable. Because if you are the light of the world, if you are the child of God that has been birthed because you were knit together in your mother's womb and there's a destiny that you are to walk in that Jesus Christ has carved out for you will understand a little bit of light shatters darkness you try long time developing film you know they don't do that again you have oh, everything is all digital but if you talk to people who develop film and there's this light coming in any light little bit of light it interferes with the developing process. Any little bit of light will affect the darkness. So therefore, when you are walking, desiring more of the Lord, asking for more of Him, wanting to grow in Him, wanting more of Him, His light will shine through you. While you sleep, your spirit man will stay awake. While you sleep, Satan can't move around freely around you. He don't have the right to come rocking you at night, harassing you at night. What is the open door? That's what we have to find out because he has legal rights, but we need to know what the legal rights are. When men slept, the enemy sowed tears. I come against all forms of witchcraft right now in Jesus' mighty name. I bind the forces of darkness right now in Jesus' Jesus. mighty name. Jesus. I ask you, Father, even as we pause right now, Father, and we worship you, Father, open up the hearts of your people and their minds. Set them on fire for you, O oh God. Father, everything that the enemy wants to send to distract, O oh God. Father, anything that's been sent to me, God, I send back to the pit right now. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, because the light of the world is whose we are. And his light shines and increases. So no weapon formed against us shall prosper, not in the dreams. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Praise his name. Let's stand and worship as we say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube for the time being. God bless you. Hallelujah.
praise his name hallelujah we the service isn't finished we're just going into some worship right now this is not the end of the first service hallelujah praise his name or the second for that matter the first is finished we're now on to the second but we're going to squeeze in a little worship before we pause after the second service praise god hallelujah <laughs> 